Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. The world is asynchronous. A lot of the business processes and workflows that you encounter out in the world are long running and driven by asynchronous workflows. Yet as developers, we're still writing procedural blocking synchronous code in a lot of situations to model this. I'm gonna give one of my favorite examples of going out to eat to a restaurant to illustrate this and how this can be applied in software. I wanna thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solace provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, manage, and deploy event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solace, check out the link in the description. One of the most common questions I get on YouTube comments or in our private Discord server for members, check out the link in the description, is about domain modeling and aggregates. People kind of get fixated on aggregates and entities and value objects. But really when I'm thinking about aggregates, I really am thinking about coordination of workflows, of business processes. There could be one overarching business process that are contained smaller ones within it, which you'll see in this video. So if you're ever curious about kind of domain modeling and aggregates, I'm not thinking so much about entities, but I'm thinking about workflow like this. So I'm gonna first describe kind of this restaurant experience, this business process in a synchronous blocking way. And I'm kind of be making fun of it because it's completely absurd to think of it in this way, but I need to kind of contrast this to how it really works. And this again, and a lot of times is how people are writing kind of business processes in code. So let's say we have ourselves. we go to the restaurant. The first thing we do when we get to the restaurant is we're greeted by a waiter, a waitress, um, a server, whatever you like to call them in your area. And they ultimately bring you to a table. Now, the thing is, in our synchronous way, if we were modeling this, that means that the server is sitting there, gives us our menu so we can pick out what we're ordering, and they just wait for us. They just sit there, sit, stand at our table, staring at us, waiting for us to pick out what we're actually going to order. We then give them the order. Then they end up, we just wait. We don't do anything. We don't talk. We do nothing else. We just sit at our table. At that point, the server then goes to the kitchen, provides the our order, to the chefs, the cooks, and they prepare the order. While our waiter, our server, is still sitting there just waiting for our food to be done. They're not doing anything else, they're just waiting, which seems kind of absurd. Once the food is actually ready, our, then, our server then takes the food back to us and we then eat our food. But the server, because we're blocking in synchronous, just sits there and waits and watches us eat our food which is really uncomfortable. Once we, the moment we finish our food, the server says, okay, here's your check, here's your bill, this is what you owe us. And as I fumble through my wallet to get my money or credit card or whatever the case may be, I provide them um, to pay that bill, to pay that uh, order, and then I'm done, the transaction's over with, the whole business process is over with, and I can leave. Now, obviously this is completely absurd because it doesn't really work this way, where you have kind of the server standing and hovering over the table while we eat, as well as the same thing as when they actually go to the cooks in the kitchen to get the order made, they just sit there and wait for it to be done. That's not how it really works. But if you think about software, we're writing it this way oftentimes, because if you kind of have a microservices or a service oriented architecture, if you're doing service to service RPC direct communication, this is what you're doing. You're blocking and waiting for something to give you a response when you want something done. Even if you have a monolith, if you're crossing a boundary within your monolith, if you have well-defined boundaries kind of in a modular monolith, you're still doing this. You're making uh, blocking calls, synchronous calls to other boundaries to get things done. But like in the real world, that's not really how it works. So let's illustrate how it does work. So I'm gonna back this up. In my real world example, I did mention earlier that there's oftentimes kind of smaller business processes within the big overarching business process. In the case of visiting a restaurant, this is the case. And oftentimes when you get to the restaurant, you're greeted by a host, hostess, that then looks availability of what tables are free and decides where to bring you to your table. So when that happens, when you show up and you speak with them saying, hey, I want a table for one or two or three or four, whatever the case may be, they then direct you to a table. This is kind of a synchronous action where you greet them, they bring you directly to your table. But at that point, you're done. You have your menus generally at that point, you're looking at your food. You haven't even spoken yet to the actual server, waiter or waitress. That was kind of the job to get you in a seat. At that point now, if somebody else comes in, 
that same uh, host, hostess, greeter can then direct somebody else to another available table. So again, we're working kind of asynchronously where we're passing on the first part of our business process was getting you to an actual seat. It was getting the, the person coming in to an actual seat. Then we're kicking off the next process to the server, the waiter or waitress, to then continue on our business process. So the second portion of this now is that we have a server, a waiter, waitress dealing with two different tables. And let's say we're the top table. So when they come to us to ask us for our order, our drink menu, whatever the case may be, we give them our order. But instead of where I was joking previously, where then they went to the, the kitchen and to the cooks to in the chefs to get the food and sit there and wait, no, rather they didn't immediately bring it. Maybe we have the table next to us that they're also taking care of that also say came in and sat relatively at the same time and they're also ready to take their order. So they do. At this point, they go back to the uh, kitchen, maybe enter into the point of sale system or however they do it to then enter the two orders so the kitchen can start preparing those. Now the thing is, they don't sit there and wait for the food to be ready. Maybe they're going to other tables, or they're going back to our table to make sure if we need any other uh, drinks or, or uh, utensils, those types of things. They're not sitting there blocking waiting. Finally, at some point, a portion of the food is ready. At this point, the, um, the kitchen could be publishing an event. I'll talk about this a little bit more in the, in, later, which at what point is a signal to our server, our waiter or waitress, that some food is available for some particular order. The, the kitchen doesn't know what exactly that it's a me. They just know a table number, for example, in a particular seat maybe that this particular meal is for. So at that point, they go pick it up from the kitchen and they deliver it to, oh, it's the second table. It's the table that ordered technically second. Again, because there's a, not necessarily a thing with ordering here. Just because two orders went in at the same time doesn't mean that they're going to come out in a specific order. Maybe this second order for the second table was quicker to cook, so they're actually going to get their food first. So they get their food, they're eating. They're the waiter or waitress, the server's not sitting there waiting and watching them eat. No, that's not what happens. They deliver the food to their table and then they leave. At this point, maybe the second order's up for our other table. That gets notified uh, to the server. They pick up the food. They then bring it to our table, which then they drop it off and we're eating. Now again, they're not just sitting there watching us eat. They end up leaving, we consume our meal, and that is kind of the second portion of this long running business process. So this may seem very obvious that we kind of have this asynchronous workflow between kind of two different service boundaries. Let's say the first service boundary is the waiter, waitress, server portion of it. And then the second is the actual kitchen. If we were using my absurd example in the first uh, scenario here, where I was doing everything over blocking kind of RPC communication between services. That means that when the server placed our order to the kitchen, they had to sit there and wait. No, that's not what's happening at all as we just illustrated. So how do we move this and model this in software to be asynchronous? So to illustrate this, I'm gonna kind of show that middle portion cause it's the one kind of interacting between boundaries, which is we wanna place an order for food that the, our wait staff here I have I listed as a top box, that's that particular boundary. That's kind of your waiter waitress server. So when we place our order, the wait staff and it's entering it in kind of their uh, point of sale system to keep track of our actual order. But from there, what they might actually do is send a command to a queue on a message broker that's specifically for the kitchen. So this is kind of dealing with our orchestration of this workflow. So this is placed in the, uh, the queue for the kitchen. You know, think about this. If you were kind of writing down on paper in a restaurant what the order was, they would tag it, put it in the kitchen, and the kitchen would just have this list of orders that they would go through to fulfill. Same kind of concept here. So at this point, the kitchen picks up that particular message, that command to uh, prepare whatever food it is. They're doing whatever they're doing in the kitchen with the stoves and all the different appliances that they have. And once our actual order, our meal is completed and ready to go, at that point, they could be publishing an event. Back to some topic or some type of reply that's going back to the broker that at that point, our wait staff is gonna see is, oh, this order is up. That's kind of the event that uh, has occurred. So the wait staff can pick up that order uh, is up event and then get the food and then give it back to us, the client. When I say long running business process, in the example of my restaurant, this could be an hour or two. 
But in other situations, a different context, maybe this is only a couple hundred milliseconds. Maybe it's a week, maybe it's a month. Again, this depends on the business process and the context that you're in. So jump back to the very beginning where I mentioned that I get a lot of comments about kind of domain modeling and entities and value objects. Really, it's kind of about events and things that are occurring that kind of do these state transitions to kind of complete this business process. Generally, they're finite. They kind of have a start and an end. And it's the transitions along the way, the commands that derive different events that get you there. Sometimes just look to the real world where communication is synchronous or asynchronous. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.